If you Google the richest black man in the world, the Nigerian business guru Aliko Dangote would be the name that pops up. And that cannot be further from the truth. In fact, our protagonist in this video is so rich that his wife stated, no matter how much money I lose, I can never be as poor as Aliko Dangote is the World Bank which is an international financial institution that provides loans to world government. Imagine having so much money that the World Bank says, your money is too big and we do not know how to handle it. This man was so rich that his son gave the Nigerian government $1 billion in cash. Stop, you don't get it. In the efforts of trying to conceptualize large numbers, we fail woefully. Our brains are not evolved to comprehend the magnitude of these large numbers. 1 billion, 10 billion, 20 billion. We mention these numbers likely, but we do not have the slightest clue just how big they are. This is the story of General Sani Abacha, the 10th head of state of Nigeria, who ruled Nigeria until his death and orchestrated the most brutal, kleptocratic and totalitarian regime in Nigerian history, which required nothing short of complete subservience, a regime that had no regard for human life. General Abacha was no patriot as one may presume by virtue of his position in the military and as the head of state of Nigeria. This wasn't someone elected into office, rather, he seized power by force on the 17th of November 1993 from the former civilian government of MKO Abiola, and at the time, Nigeria was just settling into democracy and Abacha said, hell no, no one. And I mean no one knew the ins and outs of Nigeria more than General Sani Abacha. He was one of the few people in Nigeria to be directly involved in every single coup conducted in the country, all eight of them. General Abacha had an extensive military career. At the time, he was the only person in the Nigerian army to observe every military grade without skipping a single rank. He played a pivotal role in the 1983 coup d'etat, which brought the current president, General Mahmoudou Bari, to power, and two years later constructed the 1985 coup to replace President Bari with General Ibrahim Babangida. Eight years after this began his term as the head of state of Nigeria, which lasted for five years. Five years which commenced Nigeria's economic devastation. General Abacha is pretty much the template for corruption in Nigeria because he had perfected the craft of money laundering so well that till this day, Nigeria is yet to recover from his wrath. Consequently, we are stumbling upon hundreds of millions of dollars that he siphoned out of the country. His efficiency in bankrupting Nigeria is unrivaled. So here's how he did it. Within a year of his incumbency, General Abacha issued over five decrees that positioned himself above the government and the jurisdictions of the court. Brisk were the movements of his feet in establishing authority. He fired and imprisoned everyone who opposed him, including the Attorney General and Minister of Justice. He had effectively placed himself in absolute power above the law. His military responses were swift and decisive, arresting uncooperative politicians and detaining them without charge. Charge. He imprisoned and dissolved all legislative bodies that refused to cooperate with his answer. Consequently, the following decisions come into immediate effect. The interim national government is hereby dissolved. The national and state assemblies are also dissolved. The state executive councils are dissolved. All local governments turn dissolved. The directors of personnel are to take over the administration of the local governments until administrators are appointed. The National Electoral Commission is hereby dissolved. The two political parties are hereby dissolved. All processions, political meetings and associations of any type in any part of the country are hereby banned any consultative committee by whatever name called is hereby prescribed. Decree 61 of 1993 is hereby abrogated. A provisional ruling council is hereby established. This regime will be firm, humane and decisive. We will not condone nor tolerate any act of indiscipline. Any attempt to test our will 
will be decisively dealt with. Everyone who opposed him publicly was killed. To name a few people he assassinated, The Guardian, a newspaper who criticized him publicly. One of its publishers, Alex Ibru, was shot. The National Democratic Coalition of Nigeria, NADECO, a political organization who opposed Obacha's Hanta publicly, was marked for total annihilation. Its members were driven into exile, arrested, or even killed. No one was safe, including the former president, NKO Abiola, whom he seized power from. Abacha assassinated the wife of the former president, Kudarat Abiola, on the 4th of June, 1996. Hello family, this is me literally editing this video right now. And I believe in the video, you guys should be right here at this part, right there. One of my goals of every video is to get straight to the point as fast as possible. I try to convey information as fast as possible and sometimes overlook certain really important things. And this is one of those moments. I know I've been calling Moshud Abiola the president, but he never really was president. He ran for president and he won, but key members in the military refused to accept him as president. So they're like, like, nah, bro. I'm gonna leave you all to get back to the video, and um, I hope you enjoyed the video because I enjoyed making it. General Abacha wasted no time in implementing the strategy Silence by Elimination, where he conducted brutal assassinations of prominent figures in society, instilling fear in many that if such notable people could be killed with impunity, then how much more you who are less well known? Even his vice president, General Oladik Bodia, was not safe who was sentenced to death on charges of treason. You can see him in this video begging for his life. And in the typical mannerisms of a savage, General Abacha hands him over a towel to wipe his tears. If you watched my previous video about the company who owns the Nigerian government, it is this company who sponsored the Abacha regime to carry out countless massacres in Nigeria at the time. I'm sorry for interrupting the flow of this video, but if you're still here watching this video, you, you're the real deal and I appreciate you. Let me know that you made it this far by typing in the comments, Akin, I see you. Sharing this video to others who you think may like this video is a great way to build our community. Okay, so I know what many of you may be thinking. Akin, how the heck did Abacha get away with this? Well, that is a good question and I am glad you asked. You see, General Abacha kept a closed, well-micromanaged circle. And outside of his circle, he refused journalism to thrive to the point where the public was aware of the extent to which he is bankrupt in Nigeria. He placed a ban on several media outlets. He was so methodical in stealing from Nigeria that till this day, no one knows just how much he stole from the country. We are still realizing bits and pieces of where he stashed his booty. A few hundred million here, a few hundred million there. A few billions here, a few billions there. Majority of Abacha's loot was taken to other countries, to name a few off the top of my head. The Jersey Islands in the United Kingdom, the United States, Switzerland, of course, and Liechtenstein. Please permit me to steer this video into a slightly different direction. Obtaining the stolen money is not an easy feat. First, it has to be discovered, which could take years to discover. And after that, it can take up to five to 10 years to actually obtain the funds afterwards. Liechtenstein was so reluctant to return Abacha's loot back to Nigeria because at the time, Abacha's loot constituted 25% of Liechtenstein's budget for that year. No country will give that up likely. Let us go deeper into this rabbit hole. Switzerland, a country who is praised globally for its charity in Sub-Saharan Africa, establishing themselves a clear leader amongst developed nations in providing aid to reduce poverty in Africa. Did you know that Switzerland is the number one country for laundering money out of Africa? Those who keep up with money laundering within Africa knows just how real current Switzerland is. In Switzerland, over 2.6 billion of Abacha's loot was recovered. 
He had over 140 bank accounts across a multitude of banks in the country. These banks would send agents to Nigeria to actively assist counts and carry luggages of cash out of Nigeria to Switzerland. On the surface, Switzerland is praised for sending millions of dollars to Africa under the guise of foreign aid, but on the ground, they entertain billions of dollars of stolen money from African politicians. Let me not indulge in this further because I am drifting this far off topic. I take that back. I know many may argue that it is the fault of our leaders for being so corrupt, and I don't dispute with that. The truth is, Africa is corrupt, but corruption exists everywhere, and I can present to you an argument that renders Africa the least corrupt continent in the world. My problem here is the hypocrisy that many Western countries suffer from. They paint Africa as a continent desperate for their aid, but yet they are the number one ingredient enabling, abetting, and accomplishing the factors that constitute the problems that we face. I digress. People don't know the magnitude to which Abacha bankrupted Nigeria. During the era of Abdul Salami in 1999, $750 million was discovered. Under President Olusegun's Obasanjo's administration, over $2 billion was discovered. $149 million from the Jersey Islands and $500 million was recovered from Switzerland. And another $458 million was recovered from Switzerland again the following year. During the administration of Good Luck Jonathan, one billion was discovered in 2012 and another 380 million in 2015, both of which were from Switzerland. Under the Good Luck Jonathan administration, they also discovered another 226 million from Liechtenstein and 48 million from the United States. The government of President Buhari recovered $322 million in 2017 from, you guessed it, Switzerland. And another 308 million was recovered from the United Kingdom. This list seems to know no end. Abacha's go-to strategy for stealing money was to award state contracts to friends at exorbitant prices, after which he would keep the difference. He had houses stuffed with over $700 million in cash. Nigeria was becoming too small to contain his loot. He would present false requests for security funds to the central bank and then demanded that the funds be sent to various overseas accounts. Other times, he would present covert, undisclosed, and confidential operations to the central bank and send trucks to physically withdraw the money. The bulk of the money is sent to various banks in foreign European countries and the United States. These banks invest that money in the economy of their country, making stupendous profits. They buy stocks and fund various business operations and projects in their country with our money, therefore boosting their economy at the expense of ours. In no way am I exonerating or mitigating Obacha's crimes, but I think Western countries abetting this is even worse than Obacha's looting. On the 8th of June, 1998, Obacha dies mysteriously whilst he was still president of Nigeria. No one really knows how he died since he was buried on the same day of his death without an autopsy. It is said that he suffered a heart attack. Others say he was poisoned in the conglomerates of sex workers. The news of his death was accompanied by celebration across the entire country. His wife, Miriam Obacha, decides to leave Nigeria for Saudi Arabia to mourn the death of her husband. She was detained at the airport. She had alongside her over 38 suitcases stuffed with cash. At this time, no one really knew the extent at which Obacha stole from Nigeria. Upon the discoveries of these suitcases commenced what is probably the biggest repatriation of stolen money that the world has ever encountered. General Obacha's government was hypocritical. All of this looting was done under the guise of tackling corruption. On the surface, he was praised for arresting corrupt personnel within the Nigerian government, but underground, truckloads of cash driven from the Nigerian Central Bank into his private residence to be distributed in offshore accounts. There's a company who literally owns the Nigerian government. 
It is a company located somewhere in Europe, and they have sponsored many military expeditions to be conducted in Nigeria. They work closely with many Nigerian leaders and had a close relationship with Abacha until his death. They sponsored and encouraged Abacha to imprison and execute many of his political rivals. Click this video to find out who really owns the Nigerian government. And don't forget to dislike this video.